All right, today we have Marissa here and we're talking about her postpartum course. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and about your postpartum course. Okay. Well, thank you, first of all, for having me on here. It's We've kind of been chatting on Instagram for a while now, and it's nice to put a face to the name. So thank you for that. Um, my name is Marissa Bergman. I am a wife and a mom. Um, my husband and I have been married for almost nine years, and we have two little girls that are ages four and one. We live in a tiny town in Western Kentucky. Um, I am a registered nurse and I do work outside the home part time um, in like a community health setting and I love my job. And then I also educate online. So I'm a childbirth and postpartum educator and it started out as a hobby and it's become something that I've really just enjoyed more and more of. Um, so that is what I spend my time doing. Um, as far as my postpartum course goes, postpartum is something I'm super passionate about. And we'll get into that, I'm sure, a little bit more in a second. But the course that I'm offering is actually a live workshop on Zoom. It is coming up on January the 14th at 4 p.m. But it is titled Postpartum Success. And it is all about my favorite ways to prepare your mind, your body, and your home for your fourth trimester. Um, I do have plans to package it up into a like a freestanding online offer that is, you know, work at your own pace. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's catching this at a later time, it's okay if you miss the live because it will be up online as well. So do you do these monthly as a workshop or are you just doing it this month and then you're going to turn it into a course? We'll see kind of where it goes. This is my okay. first postpartum one. Okay. Um, it it kind of depends on the demand, but I do have yeah. plans to continue to do live workshops um, on different topics. So, okay. you know, probably things like pain management and labor, um, advocating for yourself in labor and things like that, because I want to be able to serve not only the online community, because um, we have that that's a beautiful part of social media is we can reach a bigger audience, but also serve my local um, group of moms because living in a small town of Western Kentucky, these types of services are not, you know, very popular. They're, they're not easy to get access to. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm really passionate about having options for them. So it is likely that there will continue to be some sort of live option, especially for those local moms. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'm in a small town in North Carolina, actually. And so I found my midwife actually about an hour away from the city. Really? And so, I mean, that's not too bad. Sometimes you hear people are traveling yeah. like three hours for a midwife or something. So yeah, and sometimes you do have to get creative to, mm -hmm. you know, find the care that you want. Yeah, especially since I've done home births, it's been yes. different. So like, I, I love it, but you do have to kind of have some learning throughout it all. <laughs> right, absolutely. So you have a community locally that you're working mm -hmm. on and that's really great. And so you said that you do, what was it? Mind, body, and home? Yes, so we're focusing okay. on mind, body, and home because you you've had three babies, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're you're still newly postpartum with your third. Mm -hmm. um, postpartum needs to be approached holistically because it really does affect more than just how much you sleep and how long you bleed, right? Yeah. There's an emotional component, there is a mental component, and honestly, there's a spiritual component as well. Um, you know, when you step into motherhood for the first time, or you step into adding another member to your family, so a mom of three for you, that transition is going to look different every time. And um, as much as we want to hold on to what our life looked like before, because we're not always flexible with change. Um, and I think our culture really kind of pushes that of we need to be who we were before we had this baby. Mm that we do, we forget to honor postpartum as a holistic thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's so interesting how you say there's so many different like societal norms and just brainwashing, honestly, that 
goes into how we are the way we are. And a lot yeah. of it is sinful nature that does happen, mm-hmm. but we all do have a choice and we don't have to partake in that. And so I love right. when I hear somebody talk about, you know, something that is a societal norm, but they're going a different way because it doesn't have yes. to be that way. Exactly. It doesn't have to be that way. And, and I don't mean to, you know, downplay the fact that there are circumstances that make it hard, like single moms or, you know, a deployed spouse or whatever it is. But um, when we're, when we don't honor the fourth trimester for the time of healing that we need it to be, that really clouds our view of motherhood. And that really affects the way that we transition into that role for the first time or the second time or the fifth time or however many babies you have. Mm -hmm. And so I like to say, it's a down payment. You know, you think of putting a down payment on a house, um, your birth and the kind of birth experience that you have is a down payment for your postpartum. And the kind of postpartum experience you have is a down payment for motherhood. And so um, I think we view it as a luxury in our society that moms get to rest or you know, they have this extra time to heal, but it's not a luxury. It's a necessity. And that's what we have to unlearn. Yeah. And honestly, I feel like it should be a necessity for longer. Like I was just telling you, I had my yeah. six week checkup today and that's great and all. And yes, my body is mostly and like mostly healed and ready for mm-hmm. workout and all of this. But at the same time, I also am paying attention to how my body feels. And I know that I'm not going to just go full on back into things, or I know like what things I might want to work on, or actually, you know, I feel like resting a little bit longer. I'm going to allow that. And Mm -hmm. I think postpartum is one of those areas. Well, I know at least personally for me, and I feel like I've talked with a lot of other women that have done this, you know, especially with the first kid, you're sitting there trying Mm -hmm. to figure out like, all about the birth and about having a newborn and you forget about oh my body just went through a lot it's a natural occurring thing yes but it is still hard on your body and Mm -hmm. so you are healing and you are going through all these hormonal changes and your household is changing and there's just so many aspects to it and we kind of forget about that and then you're hit postpartum it's like meltdown (laughs) major tears and so yeah and it really does affect every single area of your life yeah and so when you go into like the mind aspect tell me a little Mm -hmm. bit more about like some of the areas you focus on with that yeah so it's kind of what we were just touching on right it's it's Mm -hmm. unlearning okay thinking that this is a luxury to be able to honor your body for what it needs. So that's part of it. Part of it is education. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I know you, you touched on it a second ago, but for me with my first baby, I knew nothing about postpartum. And so empowering yourself with knowledge of, for example, you know, when the placenta detaches from the uterus, it leaves a wound the size of a dinner plate. You know, that is a substantial size of a wound. And if somebody was walking around with that size of a wound outside their body (laughs) and and trying to take care of babies and do all the things, we would say, what are you doing? Yeah. You need to rest. You need to take care of yourself. So it shouldn't be any different, right? Mm -hmm. For a mom. I'm a little queasy. So every time I think (laughs) about like the internal wound, I'm always like, "Mm, just don't think about it. (laughs) But at the same time, yes, I'm all for yeah, mm-hmm. just resting through that, which, man, to kind of think of that that way, it really s- slaps it in your face. Like, yes, like right. help support women in that time to just rest mm-hmm. more, definitely. Right. And there are, you know, things that you have to do, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's not saying that you have to stay isolated in your bed for yeah. 40 days, although some cultures do that. That's awesome. Um, it, it's just... <laughs> Yeah, it's just listening to your body and honoring it and paying attention, right? Mm -hmm. Not trying to do it all. Just because you can do it all doesn't mean you have to. Yeah. And so that those kind of touch on like mind and body, some of the Mm -hmm. aspects. Um, What other things do you discuss or 
share about kind of body wise because we're we're touching more towards the mind all the body right. kind of came into that yeah what are some of the areas right. so with the body so body is those common postpartum expectations you know how how long do I expect to bleed for mm-hmm. what is a common amount of bleeding and when do I need to be concerned about something? Mm -hmm. Uh, What is my body going to look like? You know, did anyone ever tell you that you're still going to look six months pregnant after you get birth? (laughs) Seriously, so many people are so surprised. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just things that you don't necessarily think to ask or someone doesn't necessarily think to tell you. And so, you know, breastfeeding is a big thing. Uh, most, most moms that breastfeed struggle. It's, it's a natural ability, but it's also a learned skill. Yeah. Right. And generations ago, they had other mothers, sisters, cousins, friends to rely on for breastfeeding help. And we don't have that as much here now because the breastfeeding rates are not very high. In my state, I believe only 18% of babies are exclusively breastfed for Mm. the first six months of their life, which is very low. And I understand it because when I was postpartum with my first and learning how to breastfeed, I have a vivid memory of crying my eyes out and thinking, I understand why people don't breastfeed because this is hard. So teaching moms, what is a good latch? What does that look like? What is a bad latch? Um, Unlearning, focusing on numbers, right? We have this obsession with how many ounces are they getting and how do I know my baby's getting enough? So teaching them how to watch their baby instead of a number is yeah. really important. One of the most common reasons moms decide to, to end their breastfeeding journey is um, perceived low milk supply, not a true low milk supply, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So teaching them how do I, the ways to know that their baby is getting enough and how to watch their baby. Um, yeah. I know, yeah. that, like in general, I've always paid attention, like, okay like how many wet diapers and is weight gaining like things like that and those are just simple things it seems Mm -hmm. like but at the same time you don't know them until you're told them like you learn from somebody yes and learning to trust your body right like trust your god-given ability to breastfeed your baby Mm -hmm. but also take care of your body so that it can feed your baby yeah because if you're not you know, hydrating enough, giving your body enough calories, protein, vitamins, and minerals that will affect your milk supply. And so it's really all interwoven. Mm -hmm. And just having the support of that, like you're kind of touching on, you know, in general, our society is a bit less supporting. I feel like we're very quick to say we are, but actually acting Mm -hmm. that out and taking action, not as much. And I think more talk about it is great. I think that is helping. Uh, I think there does need to be more action too, of course, but talking about it is the first step. So Mm -hmm. I think that is awesome. It sounds like you have a lot of just education around it all in general with like unlearning and learning. So I love that. Right. Unlearning the bad things or the the things that, you know, you don't need to be worried about the societal things that are messing with your mind and then learning the things that are going to be helpful actually for you. Mm -hmm. And I like that you include home. So what kind of areas do you focus with the home? I I might have an idea, but I'm curious just to hear. So the home piece is all about how can I systematize areas of my life to make this easier on me, right? (laughs) (laughs) I love systems. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And and that word scares some people. I know, but I love it. (laughs) Right. But truly, you want to set yourself up for success. So Mm -hmm. a very common way to do that is think about how are you going to eat? Mm -hmm. You know, we all know you have to eat. If you have other kids, you've got other kids to feed. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to accomplish that? Is it a meal train? Is it freezer meals? Is it, um, you know, a meal delivery service? Yeah. Is it stocking up on groceries beforehand? There are things that we can do to prepare. Um, Systematizing 
your home as far as diapers, um, areas that you're going to be resting, right? You want to create a sanctuary, create a nest that makes it easy on you. I like having Um, multiple nests. (laughs) Exactly. My mom even gave me a caddy. I remember with my first born son, like just like a little plastic bin that I had like snacks and I could put phone. I could like put anything in there that I needed. I could take it out to the rocking chair or back to my bedroom and the bed. Like it was so helpful. Yeah. And it's not complicated. You know, it's not like a large amount of things, but just that small system can make a really big difference. Mm -hmm. And then thinking of things like your relationship, if you're married or you're, you know, you're in a committed relationship of any sort, um, systematizing things with your relationship of, okay, you know, this is, for example, when we had our second baby, um, you know, we had a toddler to take care of this time. So we came up with the system of, I've got the baby, you've got the toddler during the day. And during the night, a way that I got more sleep because I, I am a breastfeeding mom. So, you know, there's only a certain extent that partners can help when they're breastfeeding. They can certainly change diapers and hand you the baby and things like that. Mm -hmm. But something that we found so helpful was whenever she had her early morning feed. So if it fell around 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., whenever it fell, he would get up with her for the day. And I would stay in the bed because we're a co-sleeping family with my toddler Mm-hmm. And I would get some snuggles with her, which was really good for our relationship. But I was also able to get a few more hours of really deep sleep before he went to work because he yeah. would stay up with her. Or if she just fell back asleep, he would watch her so that I wouldn't have to be aware. Yeah. And so just taking on systems like that is really what is going to make or break your yeah. postpartum experience. And that's great because that's just even like, it's like a communication system with like mm-hmm. the other, you know, people in your household or even, you know, just talking about like who's going to be taking care of the pets or just those exactly. sorts of things that have to get done. So I love that you have that aspect to it because I thought you were just going to say, you know, home as far as maybe food and cleaning, but you brought the relationship aspect to that. And that is so great and so important. My husband and I are both talkers and we have to, we need to communicate with each other. We love it. It reassures us. It helps us be on the same page. And whereas we might over communicate sometimes and have to stop, you know, I would rather that than the latter because Mm -hmm. just not communicating can be really hard, especially in a time when things are just a little tougher and new and unknown. Sure. For sure. When you, ha- when you're low on sleep and you're finding your footing as a family, mm-hmm. um, that does put a strain on your relationship. And so yeah. keeping those open lines of communication or going on dates or spending, you yeah. know, just sitting on the couch together after both kids are asleep or all of your kids are asleep and, and having five minutes together yeah. is super important. Mm-hmm. And just the talks that it's going to look different and that's okay. It's just a season. Yeah, yes, different, all... different is not bad. It doesn't have yeah, to be bad. Definitely. Um, man, I feel like we could do all these topics oh, yeah. forever. I, I, could I talk. love hearing all that though. There was something you had said and I'm spacing just because you're saying so many good things. I was like, oh yeah, I was going to say something about it, but I'm totally. That's forgetting. okay. That's okay. Yeah. I could talk about birth and postpartum for days. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to remember it. I was hoping I'd remember it, but you know, it happens. That's okay. <laughs> But yeah, that has a good kind of idea now for your course. So I love hearing about that and, or I should say workshop more so, right? Right. It's like a, it's like a mini, it's a workshop mini course. It'll be about 60 to, right. Kind of same thing. 60 Mm -hmm. to 90 minutes long. Okay. Gotcha. And then, um, well, we kind of talked in depth really there about the process. What got you started in this? So like most people that get into birth work, it was really my own experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I've always had a fascination with pregnancy, with birth ever since a young age, as long as I can remember. But when I had my first baby, it's really when that fire started. Um, I was about nine weeks pregnant when I graduated nursing school. So I was in my first trimester and you would think, 
coming out of nursing school, I would be well educated on birth and postpartum and things like that, but I wasn't. Um, I truly just rolled into birth, ready to go with the flow. The extent of my planning was I knew I wanted to breastfeed and I knew I wanted an epidural and that was it. Mm -hmm. And so as my birth unfolded and my postpartum unfolded, Although I had a, an uncomplicated vaginal delivery, um, a healthy baby girl, I consented to some interventions um, that really affected my immediate postpartum. And I feel like that played into my postpartum experience. So she had really difficult time breastfeeding. I, I had a really difficult time getting her to latch. Um, my first latch with my baby was truly my first exposure to breastfeeding. Mm. And, and that's just setting you up for a challenging time. Right. Mm. And so as those first couple of weeks unfolded and you're, I was low on sleep. She was jaundiced. We had, you know, problems getting her to gain weight and things like that. I found myself in postpartum anxiety Um, I had some really dark, intrusive thoughts and I had always wanted to be a mom. As long as I could remember, this was something I had looked forward to. Um, My pregnancy was very much planned and wanted and something we looked forward to. And so when I started experiencing these really dark thoughts and having such a hard time, I remember thinking, is this really what I've waited for? Is this really what I've signed myself up for? Mm. This cannot be what motherhood is all about. Mm -hmm. And then it turned into, you know, what's wrong with me? Because nobody else is telling, nobody else seems to be going through this. It it just seems to be me. And I didn't want to voice those thoughts to anybody else because they Mm -hmm. felt crazy, you know? Um, So I feel like I really missed out on her first six months of life. They were a blur. Mm. And, you know, eventually we figured out breastfeeding. She gained weight. Uh, I started to come out of that fog. I would say it took a good six months for me to start to feel a little bit more like myself. Um, I didn't, I didn't honor that postpartum time. Like we're talking about, I went back to working full time as a nurse, um, in an outpatient dialysis setting at seven weeks postpartum. Mm -hmm. So working 14 hour shifts and then coming home and getting up with a newborn every two to three hours. And that's just not conducive to a positive postpartum experience. Mm -hmm. And so when I got pregnant the second time, I knew I couldn't do that again. Yeah. I, I did not want to struggle like that. I didn't want to have postpartum anxiety. And so I made very different decisions with my second birth. I did pretty much everything opposite. Um, I educated myself as much as I possibly could, you know, um, listened to, consumed so much information, talked to so many moms, lactation consultants, doulas. I hired a doula for my second birth. I switched to a midwife. Um, I had an unmedicated birth with my second and my postpartum experience was night and day different. It was amazing. I was able to really just soak her in, you know, because those newborn days are so fleeting, fleeting, they're gone in an instant. And being able to look at her and memorize her and enjoy it, you know, that was amazing. And not something I got, I didn't get that with my first. Was it hard? Yes. Was I tired? Yes, you know, um, we still had some breastfeeding things we needed to work out. But the point being, it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. And there may be some unexpected postpartum challenges that come up. You know, maybe it's breastfeeding, maybe it's a prolapse, maybe it's birth trauma that plays into your postpartum experience. There's not always things we can predict. Mm-hmm. But just like you prepare for any other event in your life, you know, you prepare to apply for a job, to go to college, to get married, you've got to prepare for birth and postpartum. Yeah. It's, it's a huge life event. 
And so you pretty much were just like, I've figured this out and this stuff has helped me. And I just want to share this with other people, huh? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I realized it didn't have to be that way. And so I want to share what I've learned and encourage other moms. You know, I, I was talking to someone just today that said, I don't know if I can have another baby because my last postpartum was so bad. Mm. I'm scared to go through that again. And that's totally valid, you know, but, but what can we consider? What can we do different to help ourselves the next time? Yeah. Which that leads me into what would be like a number one tip that you would give, you know, for Mm -hmm. a mom in the postpartum time? I would tell a postpartum mom that your fourth trimester is longer than six weeks, that it needs to be honored as a time of healing um, and that it's not a luxury, right? It's a necessity. Yeah. Let go of who you were before this baby and what your life looked like before this baby, because it looks different now. (laughs) Yeah. And it's never, (laughs) yes, yes. It's never going to be exactly the same. And that's not a bad thing. It's actually a really beautiful thing that you're stepping into a new season of life. And when we try to grasp onto who we were before, just kind of makes it harder to step yeah. into this next season. So yeah. yeah, I call it a sacred transition because motherhood is a gift. It is. God teaches us so much through just motherhood and just working on being more selfless and loving others. And it's quite yes. amazing. Um, There's not much more sanctifying than motherhood. Yeah. And so where can my listeners find you at if they want to connect with you more, check out this workshop that you have coming up? Yeah. So I'm most active on Instagram. Um, my handle is mom to mom with Marissa and that's M A R I S S A. And then I am working on a website and that will be www.mom to mom with Marissa.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marissa. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Did you know about the Holistic Life Academy? It's the ultimate life coaching program for busy Christian moms striving to be stress-free. It's where we get clarity on your goals and dreams and how to reach them. It's simplified for a realistic and easy approach so you can take action that you can actually maintain. It's holistic because not only do we focus on your to-do list, but we also dive deep into the natural alternatives tailored to your body's specific needs. In this program, you'll have access to weekly one-on-one live coaching with me, worksheets and bonuses, including breath work exercises, but best of all, the blessing of freedom, of God-given peace, confidence, and possibility. Click the link in the description to get started today, and don't forget to check out my freebies.